died when I was about your age. He's very nice. You saw my grandfather? Where did you see him? In heaven. Is this him? Is this the man you saw? No, in heaven, everybody's young. We need to get him in surgery right away. The pain that I suffered watching my son that close to death. We're in trouble here. He's much worse. Will you call some friends and pray for him? The hospital staff said that your son was not expected to survive. He saw things that I can't really explain. I lifted up and I looked down. Mom was in one room, you were in another room yelling at God. Everyone has dreams. Mine is to climb Mount Everest. Society expects you to follow a very strict certain way of life. And then at some point you just realize that it can be edited. There's no reason why Kenya should not put its flag on top of Mount Everest. We need to actually go and say, okay, we are done here, get us another mountain. 2022 is not really like a Tonga project. It's bringing everyone on board and telling them whatever that makes you dance. That is Everest 22 for you. There's a special manifestation of God, a special presence of God where He's actually manifest. And people don't know it. People cannot discern men and women with whom God has chosen and decided, okay, now you, I am with you, I have come to make my abode with you. Hallelujah. The Kenya Film Commission, in partnership with Techno Mobile, CDI Gadgets, Documentary and Reality TV, has rolled out the third edition of the Mobile Phone Film Competition. It is a competition for short films shot using exclusively mobile phones. To participate, you need to be a Kenyan citizen. Have a smartphone that can shoot video in HD. Be between the ages of 18 to 35 years old. Shoot your film not longer than five minutes. The film should be in English, but if you must use any other language, please use subtitles in your film. Working from home? No problem. Fiber Home has you covered with the fastest and most reliable internet speeds. Get connected today. Kazi lazima yendele. This is NTV. Many thanks indeed for joining us on today's installment of NTV at One. My name is Dibal Ainer. Diamond Trust Bank, a subsidy of the Aga Khan Development Network, is currently issuing food packages to residents in Subuki and Nakuru County in partnership with the government. More than 800 households have been targeted in the exercise as they seek to support families whose incomes have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Bridges Ghana joins us live from Nakuru. Bridges, good to see you. 
Thanks, Dibal. Uh, just as you mentioned, we're here with the Diamond Trust Bank, the Nakuru branch, and also the Nation Media Group Board Chairman, Wilfred Kiboro, who are leading this initiative in trying to show Kenyans that even in these times of calamity, like the COVID-19 pandemic, they are really supporting households that have been supported. Subukia is predominantly agricultural, and there are a lot of farms here. But now, even with the social distancing and stay-at-home orders by the government, most people here are not able to go out and get their daily needs. But I'm going to be speaking with the DTB regional manager here in Nakuru, and she's just going to tell us what really inspired this organization to come and stand with the families here in Subukia. Can start by your name. My name is Lucy Rotich. I work for Diamond Trust Bank Nakuru. I'm the branch manager. Now we came here to support the people of Subukia because DTB is committed to supporting people and being with them during difficult times. We've been them, we, with them during good times, so we love people from our hearts. Yes. And we said we're going to share the little we have. That is why we are here today. Okay. Especially uh, now that the pandemic is out there, people are not able to go and fend for themselves. Yes. So that is why we're here to share. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe I'll speak with the NMG board chairman. Uh, Mr. Kiboro, thank you so much. We're in Subukia County. Why did you choose Subukia? Karibuni Subukia. Mimi ni mkaji wa Subukia. I'm a resident here. And uh, I think um, it is the responsibility of all of us to do the little we can during this COVID pandemic. And therefore I reached out to various partners who could help in this. And I'm very, very pleased that the Diamond Trust came to our, to our plea. And uh, today we are helping 800 families with uh, the total number of people who will benefit from this are more than 4,000 because the average uh, size of the families here is quite large. Some of the family members are 10, 11, 12. And so we are very pleased about this. I would also like to take this opportunity to appeal to other corporates and take the leap from Diamond Trust, be generous, because even post-COVID-19, we need to support these people because these are also the people that we rely on to become our customers and so on. But recognizing that like right now they are not able even to feed themselves and so on. So here in Subukia, the people, the, 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 the families we are looking at are the disabled, the very old, the terminally sick and those long-term sick. The people who have lost their jobs you know, either through the flower farms and things like those. People who are even in transport and hospitality industries who have lost their jobs in many ways. They are very, very, very many. And although in the rural areas people don't uh, shout so much about, uh, about, about, about their plight, but they are also suffering quite a lot in this one. So thank you so much, Diamond Trust, for coming to AID and also for the corporates out there. Uh, the government cannot do this alone. It is the responsibility of each and every one of us to do the little we can and to share the little we can. I believe in the world there's enough food for everybody. If those who have the food can purpose to help those who don't have enough. So thank you, Diamond Trust, and may God bless you, and may God increase your fortunes a thousand times. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. That was the Nation Media Group Board Chairman, Alfred Kiboro, who is also leading the team here from the Diamond Trust Bank. And the Diamond Trust Bank has also contributed 100 million shillings towards the National COVID Emergency Committee, uh, the National Government, rather, COVID Emergency Response Committee. And they are saying that this is not something that's just happening here in Nakuru. They're also doing it in other parts of the country. They did this exercise in Mombasa, and they expect to head on to other parts of the country. Kitale be the next stop. Many thanks indeed. Uh, Bridges in Ghana there doing uh, good is uh, what it takes right now as we are facing this pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. We want to gravitate to a bit of politics where over 30 members of parliament from Western Kenya's four counties are currently meeting at Kotu Secretary General Francis Atwoli's home as they discuss the future of politics in the region. NTV's senior political affairs reporter Kennedy Murethi is at Atwoli's, is at Atwoli's Ildamat home and gives us the latest update Kennedy, good to see you. How are you? And uh, what do you know so far? Very good afternoon to you, Dibal, there in Nairobi. We are in Kajiado County, and just as you have said, the 30 members of parliament started arriving uh, for the last two hours ago. And right now, just a few minutes ago, we've seen three governors from the out of the four counties that are in Western region. And the only person who has not come here is Hospita Ojamwang, that is the governor for Busia. But the other three, that is Vihigas, uh, Wilba Otichiloka Kamegas, uh, Wycliffe Oparanya, 
and also Bungoma's weekly uh, Wangama tea have, have just arrived here and there to crown it all there is the minister for devolution that is uh, Eugene Wamalo who's just come here and the meeting has just started. We were hoping to speak to uh, to the S Secretary General Koto, that is Francis Atuli, who is hosting these members of parliament. But just that the meeting has just started. But in our earlier conversations, they were telling us that this meeting is all about discussing the political future of the Western region. How do they come together and discuss this issue? It is one of the most elusive issues that has been discussed in this country. And the Luya unity keeps on being discussed every time an election is nearing. Remember in 2022, there's going to be that conversation. And this conversation has just been reignited two years to the general election. And this question that is being held here, according to the organizer, that is Francis Atuli, that this conversation is not is just starting. We've not been able to see Ford Kenya leader, that is Moses Wetangula, and Mamani National Congress leader Musalia Mudavadi, but we do understand that some of their members of the or the membership of those two political parties, they were under immense pressure not to attend this particular meeting. And what we do understand is that the coming together of these politicians is actually sending a signal with regards to what direction the region wants to take in 2022. Remember, the Western region has been one key area where politicians have been seeking to gain membership and also seeking to gain support with regards to any election. In 2017, uh, NASA principal and ODM leader Raila Odinga came out on top as he, were, as he wanted to seek the presidency of this country. But we've also seen uh, Deputy Leader of Jubilee, and that is Deputy Party, that is the Deputy President William Ruto, has been making some inroads with regards to that area. And that those inroads that he has been making has ever, have actually seen him win some support from not just the locals but some of the politicians. I remember in the run-up to the Building Bridges Initiative report or the rally that was slated for that area, there was some political maneuvering that was there that also saw a section allied to Deputy President William Ruto uh, try to hold their own meeting. But also what we do understand from this particular area, number one, they will be celebrating Tongaren MP Eseli Simu's new elevation to the deputy minority whip uh, of the National Assembly. Another thing that they will be looking forward to is that there has been talk that in the probability that uh, in the probability that Mumias West, member of parliament, uh, Ben Washiali, is removed from his majority whip position, one of the people who is going to benefit is Emmanuel Wangwe. And if he benefits from that position, then that is a discussion that will be made at this particular point. So it is all about 2022. This is with regards to disregarding everything coronavirus. But we've also gone inside the meeting and we've seen that some of those uh, measures to contain coronavirus have been put in place. But they are saying that they cannot set aside politics and they, it is part of it. So those are seeing things that they will be discussing. But then again, the question that comes, and I will leave it with you, Dibal, is is this elusive Luya unity going to work ever? And those are the questions that they will be asking themselves regarding now that they have already there has already been disquiet from the two main leaders from that area, that is Musalia Mudavadi and Moses Wetangula, with regards to how this conversation will go. Some of their some of their people are already calling some of the members whom we've been speaking to since this meeting started, and they were saying that they were being asked not to come to this meeting. So how will it go? And these are the questions that we are asking ourselves. We will be ready to give you the resolutions of this meeting when it is over and what the direction will be. We know that already uh, Francis Atwoli has been very categorical that he does not want Deputy President William Ruto to ascend to the presidency. But we are preparing uh, and we are gathering what is happening and we'll be giving you a full report in our uh, subsequent bulletins. Back to you, Dibal in studio. Many thanks indeed, Kennedy Marithi. We look forward to you giving us that report later also in the day. Still on that beat, Ugenya Member of Parliament David Ocheng has turned the move by opposition coalition NASA to dewip him from the House Health Committee as wishful thinking. Ocheng, Ocheng argues that he is neither a member of NASA nor is his party, MDG, an affiliate of the coalition. Ocheng, who is the MDG party leader, claims that the purported dewipping by NASA is aimed at painting him as anti-president Uri Kenyatta and opposition leader Ilo Dinga. 
in the 2017 general elections and 2019 by-elections in Ugenya constituency, Ucheng won despite the region being majorly dominated by Odinga's party, ODM. I only sit in one committee, by the way, because I needed time to build my party. I only sit in the health committee. I don't sit there because of ODM or any coalition. And so there was no way they can move me in a committee. I, I want to tell you that today that there's no way uh, NASA can move from a committee at all. They have no capacity, legal or otherwise. Yeah, it's a wishful thinking and uh, hangover of the past, really. If I join NASA, you don't belong to NASA. I don't even caucus with NASA. Neither do I caucus with Jubilee in Parliament. I remain in my party. I lead that party. And uh, yeah, um, I think I'll treat this with the content that it deserves. On to matters academia now, where President Uru Kenyatta has signed into law the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development Amendment Bill of 2019. The new law requires the KICD to integrate personal safety and psychosocial skills training in the curriculum for basic and tertiary institutions. This is all in a bit to improve the country's disaster preparedness with particular attention to learning institutions. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha says the government might be considering introducing Chinese language to pupils under the competency-based curriculum. Magoha was speaking at the University of Nairobi where he officially opened the Confucius Institute. The center will cater to students and teachers who are teaching the Chinese language where they will be taught the Chinese culture and language. According to Magoha, this will further enrich the relationship between China and Kenya. The institution has state-of-the-art facilities and it is expected that it will attract students from all over the continent. The competency-based curriculum is so important that it requires that you teach languages starting from grade four in primary schools. There is no reason why one of those languages should not be Chinese. But since we have about 30,000 primary schools, this is an opportunity to train teachers who will teach in Chinese and also to encourage the government of the Republic of China to partner with us in this process and to ensure that those children who are keen on being experts in Chinese start at that stage. That's another advantage. Now across the country, in Nyeri, DTB has also been spreading joy at least 1,000 vulnerable households through donation of food and other sanitary items in Kienik West. Our, our central region reporter, this is Lita Olatengis, now joins us live with an update. Lita, good afternoon, good to see you. Coming to you from Kieni West, where the Diamond Trust Bank has donated foodstuff worth about 2.5 million shillings to the vulnerable in this area. About 1,000 families uh, will benefit with a package of about 2,500 uh, shillings worth of food, which will last them for about a month. I'm here with the chairperson of DTB, Linus Gitai, just to uh, let us in on why they have decided to come here to Kieni West and donate the foodstuffs. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Perhaps, uh, what is the exercise about today here in Kieni? Yeah, first of all, let me say that uh, the DTB is 70 years old, so we are one of the over 70 years old. This we are one of the oldest banks in this country, so we have seen a lot as this country has developed, and therefore we are very sensitive. We understand Kenya. We are very sensitive to the plight of Kenyans whenever they have issues, and that is why we are here. Because when COVID uh, was announced, uh, we were one of the first banks to respond, and we committed 100 million shillings uh, to this cause. We gave 50 million to the team that was appointed by His Excellency the President, and we have been distributing the balance in very many specific need areas. As you know, in terms of this area, Kenya is one of the most vulnerable places in this part of the world. There are people who actually regularly get food, and you can imagine now with COVID, it is only worse. And that is why we decided to dedicate 2.5 million shillings. We worked with the administration, we worked with the DC who is here, we worked with about seven chiefs, and they gave us a list that can be audited 
or people who are vulnerable and they are the ones who are being given chakula here. Why are we doing this? It's also a way of saying thank you because uh, we have a, br a branch here in Yeri, we have uh, many, many branches across the country and we are a bank that has been very focused on individuals, on small businesses, SMEs and we've been working with them and they have been uh, supporting us and uh, now when there are issues it is our time also to come out and show that we are good, not just show, uh, demonstrate that we are good corporate citizens and that is why we're here. Thank you so much, uh, Lina Sitai, for that brief. And you've heard it from the horse's mouth. Of course, they are on the front line also supporting the vulnerable. Of course, these are very uh, desperate times, COVID-19 times. Allow me to speak to the Member of Parliament of Kieni, uh, Kanini Kega. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us here today. Uh, perhaps, what do you tell the DTB Bank for uh, actually donating foodstuffs to your constituents? One, we want to say clearly that we are very, very grateful because when we went to them, they listened to us. And not just us, they donated 100 million shillings to the, that, the kitty that is led by Jen Karuku. So we really appreciate. This is the time that uh, the corporate world should come together, join hands with the government to mitigate the issues that we have at the moment. This, uh, we have unprecedented times. And this is the time to show that soft side, that um, magnanimous side. And we are happy that uh, DT, Dobby, uh, DT Bank uh, has uh, uh, partnered with us and they came down to the ground, not just in, uh, in Europe, but coming to the ground to make sure that they also give back to the community that has also been supporting it. So we really thank, uh, especially the chairman, who came out uh, very clearly and said that uh, we want to come on the ground and see what is happening. So we did appreciate. Uh, appreciate. Secondly, DT uh, Bank, I think it's the only bank that has not uh, laid off workers, and especially during these difficult times. And we want to beseech the corporate world, that we are in very difficult times. If, for example, what happened in, uh, uh, in one of the hotels yesterday, that we are going to lay off staff basically because of these uh, hard times, then definitely we will be complicating or we will, make it, we will be making a bad situation already worse. So thanks so much, uh, DT Bank, and we want to assure you that the food that you have donated to us will be given to the right of people and we'll also make sure that we also return hand you know, as we say in our local dialect, that at the opportune time, that when you are choosing a bank, for sure, DT is one of the banks that you will be going for. Thank you very much, Kanini Kega. That is Kanini Kega, the MP of uh, Kieni constituency. This is in Nyeri County. And of course, uh, the DTB Bank will be uh, donating these foodstuffs to uh, different parts of Kieni West this afternoon. And of course, we will be uh, keeping an eye here and of course, pitching tent just to bring you uh, late more news on our later on bulletins. But for now, for Milita Oletenges in Nyeri County, back to you in studio. No, thanks indeed, Melitas. Now, the Cabinet Secretary of Public Works and Gender, Margaret Kobia, has today revived the hope of thousands of Kenyans who are yet to be paid for services they rendered to the National Youth Service. Kobia says that the payment of six billion shillings and pending bills for the last financial year is still ongoing, with the next payment phase set to start in the next three months. Kobia was speaking as she led the inspection of the manufacturing of face masks at the service where 1.7 million masks have been manufactured in the last three months. Lillian Kiari joins us at the NYS headquarters in Rua Raka with more. Lillian, what are you learning? You know, the COVID-19 pandemic got the country by surprise, but one thing that it has done is show the tenacity of the manufacturing sector. Here in Rua Raka at the NYS headquarters, we are able to make an inspection of where they're making face masks and they're telling us they make about 90,000 face masks each day. And right now, since March, they have been able to make 1.7 million face masks, having a million of them been distributed to and been donated to the public free of charge. Of the 700,000 have, uh, have been, you know, given to clients of which they are buying each at 55 shillings. C.S. Kobia was able to make a visit this morning where she not only talked about the making of the face mask at this facility, but she also talked about the disbursement of money by the Women Entrepreneurship Fund and also the Uwezo Fund, where the Women Entrepreneurship Fund have given about 650 million shillings, while the Uwezo Fund has given about 250 million shillings. Here at the headquarters, I'm joined by Harriet Mboro, who is in charge of this facility that is making the face masks. And she's going to just be telling us 
How are they able to do this? How many people have been deployed to be in charge of this particular activity? And she's also going to be telling us how they're able to navigate between the making of the uniforms at the same time making of the face masks. Harriet, tell yes. us, how many face masks are you planning to make at the end of the pandemic or by the time the pandemic is already, you know, comes to an end? Uh, actually, we don't. We, we are hoping to make about two million masks, and we are hoping the pandemic will be will end, will end soon. So two million. So far, we have made 1.7. We have dispersed one million, 1.3 million. So in the stores, we have about 400 million, 400,000. Sorry. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us how you came about the 55 shillings price point of making one mask go for 55 shillings. Other masks in the market are going for a cheaper rate. Why 55 shillings? Our masks are three ply. So three ply means that you put in three pieces per mask. So there's the inner one, the outer one, and the, the other side, and the straps. After doing the costing and the costing of the material, we came up with the price at 55 shillings. How many people have been deployed to carry out this task? Currently we have 250 operators and then we have our officers, about 40 of them. So we are doing together with them. So Jibal, we are getting to understand that in the next three months, NYS is also going to ensure that they pay all the people who are yet to be paid their pending bills. This is an activity that is going to end in September where they will have already verified the number of people who need to be in the list of the people who are paid the pending bills. Back to you, Dibal. Some good news indeed there. And of course, we look forward to them stream rolling that and making sure that any pending bills of course, he's paid up. Thank you, Lilian Kiera. There, we we'll look forward for more in the evening uh, from you as well. On God, good not to take a short break. When we circle back, we continue with more. Don't go away. <laughs> Rashes again. <laughs> Kiss Kids Diapers. Kiss Kids, no rashes. Kiss Kids, no rashes. Bye bye, rashes. Bye, diapers. Choose Kiss Kids. Tonadol Extra. Imetengenezo kwanjia speciali kupamana haraka na maumivu ya kichwa, mwili na hata meno. Tonadol Extra. Hakika. Maumivu ya kizidi. Working from home? No problem. Fiber Home has you covered with the fastest and most reliable internet speeds. Get connected today. Kazi lazima yendele. Kipata mimba saiji kwaere yako. Mimi tajua yu mimba ni yako. Mano likuwa wapi ya kipata mimba? So chief anafaa kuwe wapi mimba ikipenda. Kwa sewe complain, ati mtu wezi get loan na youth fund bila connections, nyinyi ndiyo hiyo connection. Sisi ndiyo hiyo sasa debi. No, no, sisi hiyo. Opportunities kwa Nairobi. Una msi yako, usha ago, kilomita za we, awezi compare na mimu wenye naka karibu na pali ya mentapo. COVID-19 is preventable. Protect yourself, your family, and the community. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. I was thinking today, um, I'm, I'm going to stick with the empty tomb. And, and I want to make a big deal out of that. And I know for most of us uh, evangelical Christians, we are very familiar and very comfortable with the space of the cross and the death of Christ. Uh, but we don't think too much about the resurrection. And yet... If Christ had died and remained dead, there would be nothing for us to celebrate. Welcome back. President Uru Kenyatta is calling on world leaders to concentrate on expansion of global liquidity and addressing debt vulnerability, especially for developing nations, to ensure inclusive growth and continued job creation. 
In his capacity as the current president in office of the Organization of the African, Caribbean and Pacific States, President Kenyatta announced plans to host an extraordinary summit to deliberate on the effects of COVID-19 on the people and the economies of member countries. He spoke last evening during a virtual high-level meeting on development financing in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic convened by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, his Jamaican counterpart Andrew Holness, and the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. In his closing remarks, the UN Secretary General unveiled a six-point roadmap to help the world overcome the effects of the pandemic. Official development assistance is likely to fall far below the 2018 levels and short-term financial market volatility, as well as debt risks, will rise further, not just for the less developed countries, but also for vulnerable middle-income developing countries, as we have heard from some of our colleagues. Sadly, we have also in the same period witnessed protective trade behavior with direct impact on our exports and therefore our financial capacity to cater for the health and economic needs of our people. We find ourselves in a truly special historic time. With a debate on going on how to reopen the economy, the religious leaders have also joined in and want to be involved. Pastors in Mukurukwanjing, Islam, are now laying procedures on how to conduct services under the new normal guidelines. But Muni has more. Pastors from different churches have now raised concern on the tough times that the church members have been enduring during this COVID-19 pandemic. They are now pleading with the government to ease with the restrictions. The pastors have come up with new guidelines on how they will be conducting the church service while adhering to social distancing. Kitu cha kwanza tutakuwa na ile hali ya hao kunawa mikono, kukaa katika distance. Na zaidi ya hayo pia tumepanga ya kwamba tutakuwa tumewapata sasa tunaweza kuja kwenye vikundi. Sababu uenda atutakuwa tunakusanyika kama vile tulivyo kuwa tunakusanyika ibada moja karika watu wote. The indefinite closure of churches halted all monetary support they have had, leaving many pastors unable to support themselves. Ruth Munyi, NTV. Hako Industries has donated sanitizers and disinfectant hand wash to the Kenyatta National Hospital in a bid to combat the spread of COVID-19 and ensure that those on the front line are well protected. The company has also started manufacturing hand sanitizers and hand wash, which will see many less fortunate Kenyans benefit. Hako Industries says it will continue distributing sanitizers across hospitals as well as partner with counties by distributing the sanitizers. Kenyatta National Hospital CEO Dr. Evans Kamuri highlighted this, that since frequent hand washing and improved sanitation became the norm, the number of people seeking medical services has dropped significantly. We will be donating to hospitals across the country. We are looking at uh, donating to at least uh, 10 to 15 hospitals across the country. We are also looking to support uh, county, county governments because they are also in this battle, a big part of this battle, their communities. We are looking at supporting children's homes um, as well as old people's homes. I can tell Kenyans that actually with the habits that we have acquired now, social distancing and uh, washing hands, actually our diseases have actually come down. One of the diseases that is coming down is the diarrhea diseases, which we used to get. Even normal colds that people used to get because of close uh, contact, the pneumonias are actually coming down. That's why while we are fighting Corona, it's actually also helping us also that our disease patterns and the health of Kenyans is the health of Kenyans is actually changing. Residents living in Makima and Mwea in Mbere South took to the streets to protest a court decision that reaffirmed cancellation of more than 9,232 titles in 44,000 acres in the Mwea settlement scheme. The Embu Environment and Land Court ruled against an appeal by Mwea residents who wanted the controversial Mwea settlement scheme to be subdivided for people living in the area. But angered by the ruling, the residents showed their displeasure on the streets. They have since been warned by the Embu County Commissioner Abdullahi Galgalo against disregarding court orders.
The commissioner also said some leaders had been summoned to record statement over recent protests where residents destroyed beacons erected by Tada. Galgalo assured the residents that the government will give dialogue a chance but will still enforce law and order. Justice Angima dismissed the case in its entirety, paving way for the forceful removal of the residents if they declined to move voluntarily. The court had nullified 9,232 title deeds in Moya Settlement Scheme after citing fraud in the way the land was subdivided and distributed and at that time directed the whole process of subdivision be repeated under supervision of Embu County Commissioner. So wananchi kama wako mwanalamishi fulani wanajua njia za kutumia. Kwa mfano ukienda kotini ukishindwa una appeal kwa uh, koti ambayo iko juu ya ile ambayo ime, imetoa hukumu. So kwa hivi sasa ile tuko nayo ni kuwa kuna court order ambayo inasema kuwa hiyo ardhi ni hatarana na lazima wale ambao wali occupy kwa, ma, kwa makosa waondoke. Na mimi ningependa kutoa mwito uh, kwa wananchi kama ardhi sio yao sio yao. The Council of Governors has received a donation from the Fred Hollows Foundation, an Australian humanitarian agency that focuses on health issues more specifically in addressing eye complications and blindness. The 5.7 million shillings donation will go towards supporting the counties in addressing the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic through provision of personal protective gear for the medics in the county hospitals. Oparanya acknowledged the gains that the health systems in Kenya have achieved thanks to the attention brought about by the pandemic. He says that health officials should pick lessons from this season to keep on improving the health systems even after the pandemic. The Australian High Commission and the management of the Fred Hollows Foundation reiterated their support for the country's effort to manage the pandemic and improve the health care in Kenya. About five million Kenya shillings. And this support is across uh, uh, PPE kits for the health workers and also to support uh, activities in the isolation center. So we are looking forward to uh, continued partnership with the uh, governor, county government, with the Ministry of Health. Uh, we're very pleased on behalf of the Australian government and the people of Australia uh, to be supporting the Fred Hollows Foundation and other organizations from Australia to help uh, the Ministry of Health in, in Kenya and the county governments in Kenya uh, to pivot uh, towards the response on COVID-19 and, and provide urgent support. Uh, and uh, let's hope that we can, we can all get through this um, as quickly as possible and, and of course continue to support uh, the health system more broadly. And I'm happy to report that now all counties have ICU facilities. Before then, we had only 16 counties with ICU facilities, but the entire 47 counties now have ICU facilities. That does it for now. For now, thank you for your valued company. Have a good one. help women find independence by training them in fish farming. Oh, it's tough on my back, joints, and can cause headaches. Panadol Daddy. Extra relieves multiple types of pain. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Jifunze kukohoa na kupiga chafia na rafiki yako Grover. Hatua ya kwanza, tambua kuwa unakaribia kupiga chafia. Hatua ya pili, elekeza kiwiko chako kwenye pua na mdomo. Hatua ya tatu, Gwezun tight. Moya, bili, tatu. Kumbuka kukohoa kwenye kiwiko chako au kwenye karatasi ya shashi ambayo unaweza kuitupa kwa haraka. More spice, spice. This week on NTV Jungle. It's gonna be a vibe. It's gonna be a killer. It's gonna be a party. I'll be having a 
having a guest in studio all the way from Jamaica. And I'm talking about gentleman. Bless you, love, Kenya. I'm very excited. This Saturday, I'm going to be live on NTV Jamda. Napia, I'll be taking all your requests, playing them right here. The hashtag is Jamdown KE. Stay safe, sanitize. See you then. Bless the love. Looking forward. Oh, back back. Imperial, your devil complex inferior. Football is back. This Saturday on NTV, Hatha Berlin takes on FC Augsburg live in Olympia Stadion Stadium from 4.30 p.m. You don't want to miss this action. NTV Turning on your world. The following program has been rated PG. It may contain scenes unsuitable for children under the age of 10. Ah, oh, Richard and I go way, way back. Oh, oh, oh. Joey is upset with me and Becky is on my neck. This, this entire merger could be ruined. Now why don't you 